a burger dish I made today was so delicious. It was a homemade burger with butter lettuce, sliced tomato, a lemon mayo with a tomato jam, and also some crispy oven baked fries. And honestly, that was one of the best combos for a burger I've ever tasted with that acidity and like the oiliness of the mayo. And then you have that nice fresh tomato and then the acidity, kind of like sweetness with the tomato jam. And then the oven baked fries were so crispy. And I'm just trying to share my passion and share my love of cooking with, with you guys. And um, maybe you can make this dish for your family. I am and I'm not your average 14 year old kid. I'm gonna try to take you on a journey from one thing to another. I wanna have different flavors, I want you to experience different kinds of tastes, textures, presentations, all that. A lot of people don't know is that what makes a nice patty is actually the fat to meat ratio. So today we're going to be using sirloin which is a little bit more leaner. And then to balance it out we're also going to be using some chuck which has a lot more fat. So first things first, we're going to be starting off with our delicious tomato jam. So for that you guys are going to need four tomatoes, some lemon, onion, uh, some cumin, a little bit of oil, and that's it. And like I said, if you guys don't want to go through the hassle of making this delicious tomato jam, you can always use this ancient product called ketchup too. Just going to slice that in half and just dice that up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my pan on medium high heat and just let that heat up. And while that's happening, we're going to push this aside and I'm just going to start chopping up these tomatoes. Now, you, all you have to do is just roughly chop them because what we're going to do is we're going to let them simmer down for about 30 to 40 minutes. There we go. Just like that. Stir that around a bit. And then now we can just let our onions cook really nicely. Alright, so these are starting just to brown up a little bit and you just want to continue to let them cook. And while that's happening, we're just going to continue to chop up our tomatoes. So you know what your onions are done when they start to turn a little brown. And you also have to keep in mind that we're going to saute the tomatoes for a minute or two. So you don't want to let them get too brown. So turn the heat off and just set it aside. And there we go. Now you're going to want to add our lemon juice. Half a teaspoon of lemon juice should be good. Not too much because the tomatoes actually already have some acidity. And then just quarter teaspoon of some vinegar. We're also going to add just a little bit of cumin, just a pinch. Alright, just give that a stir. So now that we added everything into our pot, we're just going to let this simmer for about 45 minutes to an hour or until you get that really nice jammy consistency. And one thing, you may think that you need to add water in it, but the tomatoes already have so much water that you actually don't even need to. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do, are we're going to start cutting up our russet potatoes for our fries. And now we're actually not going to be frying these, we're actually just going to be baking these. Now fries are something that obviously everyone loves, but especially me. Because like, you know how you say like, oh, I could literally eat a whole bowl of this full of fries? I could literally eat a whole bowl of them. All right, so once you guys have chopped up your fries, you just want to put them on a sheet tray and cover them with some oil, salt, and pepper. A little bit of fresh pepper and your fresh salt. And now just stir those around a bit. Alright, so now that we've coated up our fries, we're going to go and place them inside our oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until they're crispy and they're cooked through. So you just want to stir your tomato jam every 5 to 10 minutes and just make sure you guys keep an eye on it. And what I'm looking for is just to let the tomatoes cook down till it really gets into like this really nice consistency. So that's what you want to look for. It smells so delicious in here. And the best part about it is that you can store these inside some jars and keep them inside your fridge for about two weeks. And you can use them for your burgers or anything like that. 
and you can actually replace this for ketchup. It's a lot healthier, and you know what you're putting inside. What I am going to try to take you on is something that I love to eat. Whether that's steak, whether it's a piece of tuna, whether that's a lobster or ravioli, or it's a seared rack of lamb. But you're always going to taste a really well-balanced dish. And the, the, the thing is, like, not everything is going to be a molecular gastronomy, or not everything will be American cuisine. I'm going to try to take you on a journey from one thing to another, whether that's American, whether that's Asian dish, or, or anything else. Like Alright, so next thing we're going to be making is our lemon mayo. And how we're going to be making this is by egg yolks, and we're going to drizzle in our oil with some lemon juice, and it's going to taste really acidic, but it's going to be so delicious. Alright, so we're going to start by separating three of our eggs, and you just want to get the egg yolk. All right, so now we're gonna add just a pinch of salt and about a teaspoon of lemon juice. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hand blend this and we're gonna slowly drizzle in our oil. And also keep in mind, you may need to drizzle in some more oil depending on how big your egg yolks are and whether they're large eggs or not. So just kind of play around with it with, with your measurement. Oh, that tastes good. It has like this really nice lemon consistency, but it also has like that mayo oily kind of feel to it. It's perfect. Our tomato jam has been simmering for about 45 minutes, and now we're just gonna blend this up so we get a little nicer consistency, and all the chunks of tomato and onion are blended up nicely. Now you don't want it too chunky, but then you don't want it super smooth. Perfect. Alright, so I just added in about half a teaspoon of sugar, stir that around, and now you gotta let your tomato jam cool, and you're done. So after looking at a lot of just dishes and just getting all this information, I wanted to create stuff that was new. So basically what I look for inside a dish, or like when I'm creating, is I start off with a protein, because then you can base like the elements that work off that. And then I love to look for texture, color, uh, presentation, how, like I kind of envision it in my mind. And then if it doesn't work, then I would kind of go over the elements, maybe take away something, maybe add something, and just change the plate. So that's how I kind of think of a dish. So the fries have been cooking for about a good 20 minutes, they're nice and crispy. And now I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt, and you always have to do that when they're hot, so that way the oil soaks it up and it really just sticks to them. Dang, these are actually pretty good for especially baked fries. So now that we got all of our condiments all ready to go, it's time for the fun part, and that's make our beef patty. So here I have two different types of beef that I just got grounded. This is chuck and that's sirloin. Now the ratio is about half to half, kind of like even. And we're just going to season these with some salt and pepper. And now just a little bit of salt. And then just kind of get this into a nice big patty shape. Uh, whenever you eat my dishes, it's obviously good. got to look good because that's something that I think is really nice because just presentation is something that I love. Admire. That was one of the first things I got to be introduced to when I was looking at that because presentation so it kind of got sinked into my head. And just really flavors and acidity and just a really well balanced dish. When you're cooking a steak, you want to have your pan hot, hot oil, get a really nice sear. And it's exactly how it is with a burger. You don't want to like boil your burger in like a cold pan. Alright, so I'm going to grab my oil, put some in there. Here, that's a perfect piece. Alright, so our patty is just about done. Putting off the sign really nice here. I'm gonna flip that over. Look at that. 
beautiful sear. Turn your pan off. And now, one of the keys that I really like in a burger is when it, just like when you let it rest, kind of like a steak. So you're gonna wanna let this cool for about five or 10 minutes, and then we're gonna assemble our burger. And then now, here I just have your simple lettuce and tomato. Perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add our condiments. So we have our fresh mayo, our lemon mayo that we made earlier. Just gonna spoon some on top there. Look at that, so good. And then, for the finale, we also have our delicious tomato jam. Okay. And you guys, you do not know how delicious this tomato jam is. It's so good. It's totally worth the time. Place your burger on top. And then, it's time for the fries too. All right. So I have the fries here, and these fries are so good. And there you guys have it, a homemade delicious burger, two different types of beef with lettuce, tomato, homemade tomato jam. Also, we have a homemade lemon mayo, oven baked fries, and tomato jam to dip them in. And that's how you make a burger.